In this video, we will talk about the types of hard disks, system firmware, and partition types. We will start with the basic concepts and terminology of disk management and gradually move to the advanced tools and techniques. There are three types of hard disks, HDD, SSD, and NVM Express SSD. HDD stands for Hard Disk Drive. It contains spinning platters and a moving needle. Platters are circular disks made of a non-magnetic material such as aluminum alloy, glass, or ceramic. They are coated with a thin layer of magnetic material on both sides that is used to store data. The moving needle is called the head. It is used to perform read and write operations on platters. During this operation, the platters rotate at tremendous speed. The speed is measured in RPM. More RPM means more speed and cost. SSD stands for Solid State Drive. There are two variations of SSD, SATA SSD and NVM Express SSD. The SATA SSD uses a SATA cable to connect to the motherboard. NVM Express SSD uses a PCI Express or M.2 slot to connect to the motherboard. SSDs use integrated circuits to store data. They do not contain any moving or magnetic parts. They use integrated circuits that are fixed on PCBs. It makes them more durable, faster, and less prone to damage and corruption. Let us briefly compare all three types. HDD and SATA SSD use a SATA cable to connect to the motherboard whereas NVM Express SSD does not use any cable. It uses an M.2 slot. HDD can read and write with a maximum speed of 150 megabits per second. SATA SSD can achieve a maximum speed of 600 megabits per second. The actual speed an SSD offers is much higher than it, but the SATA cable we use to connect it to the motherboard does not support the speed beyond this limit. For example, if we use an NVM Express slot to connect the SSD to the motherboard, it can read and write at a maximum speed of 6000 megabits per second. Hard disks have been on the market for many years. They are easily available in much bigger sizes than SSDs. You can easily buy an 8 terabytes or a 16 terabytes hard disk from any local retailer or online store. While SSDs are new in the market, they are available in small sizes. If you need a bigger sized SSD, you need to buy it directly from the manufacturer. A hard disk is the cheapest data storage option whereas an NVM Express SSD is the most expensive storage solution. Because of this, data storage servers still rely on HDDs and SATA SSDs since the value of storage outweighs the need for fast storage. A computer can use two methods to exchange data between storage devices and the motherboard. These methods are serial transmission and parallel transmission. In serial transmission, data is transferred bit by bit. In parallel transmission, multiple bits are transmitted simultaneously. For example, the IDE cable we use to connect a hard disk to the motherboard transfers 8 bits at a time. Parallel transmission is faster than serial transmission. However, Manufacturers and vendors prefer serial transmission due to processing overhead, cable size, and crosstalk. Let us understand these reasons in detail. Computers store and process data bit by bit. When you create and save a file on a hard disk, the hard disk saves the file bit by bit. Similarly, when you read a file from the hard disk, the head of the hard disk reads all bits of the file one by one and sends them to the application you use to read the file. The application merges all bits and uses them as a single file. Since all devices on a computer read, write, and process data bit by bit, if we use a parallel medium to connect them, the medium creates processing overhead. Let us understand it through an example. Suppose a hard disk is connected to the motherboard through the IDE cable. As mentioned earlier, an IDE cable uses parallel transmission. It transmits 8 bits or 1 byte at a time. To send these bits to the disk, the motherboard has to line up all bits and load them on the IDE cable. Once the loading is completed, the IDE cable transports them to the hard disk. The hard disk reverses the process. It unloads all bits one by one and processes them. Since the motherboard and hard disk process serial data and IDE cables transport parallel data, the data is converted at both ends. The sender device converts it from serial to parallel. The receiver device converts it from parallel to serial. It creates a lot of processing overhead because the transmission medium doesn't match the original input or desired output. We can remove this overhead by using a serial cable. Since a serial cable transports data in the same medium the motherboard and hard disk use, it does not create any processing overhead. Parallel cables are thick and bulky. They consume a lot of space. They block the airflow and trap the heat generated by the CPU and other components inside the cabinet. Unlike parallel cables, serial cables are thin and compact. 
they consume a little space and do not block airflow inside the cabinet. When signals travel over copper wires, they create an electromagnetic field that affects the signals traveling in adjacent wires. This disturbance is called crosstalk. On a parallel cable, multiple signals travel side by side at the same time. It creates a lot of crosstalk. On a serial cable, only one signal travels at a time. It significantly reduces the crosstalk. We have four types of interfaces to connect a hard disk to the motherboard. These types are SCSI, PATA, SATA, and NVM Express. Let us understand these types in detail. SCSI was developed in the mid-70s as a common interface to connect multiple devices to the motherboard. It uses a SCSI cable to connect devices to the motherboard. Until the dedicated interfaces to connect devices to the motherboard were not developed, it was used as a default interface to connect scanners, printers, and hard disks to the motherboard. Initially, it was developed for parallel transmission. Later, it was upgraded for serial transmission as well. Serial SCSIs offer faster data transmission speed than the parallel SCSIs. It can transfer data up to 80 megabits per second. SCSI cables are no longer used in personal computers to connect hard disks. PATA is also known as IDE. It uses an IDE cable having 40 or 80 pins. With a 40-pin cable, you can connect a single storage device to the motherboard. With an 80-pin cable, you can connect two storage devices to the motherboard. It offers a maximum data transfer speed of 133 megabits per second. It uses parallel data transmission technology. It was developed as the dedicated interface for the storage devices. It was launched in 1986. It was widely used in computers until the early 2000s. It is no longer used in personal computers. SATA was developed as a replacement for PATA. It was launched in 2003. It became popular within a few years of its launch. Within a decade, it captured 98% of the market share in personal computers. It uses serial transmission. Serial transmission reduces processing overhead and crosstalk. It is available in different generations. First generation SATA was launched as a 1.5 gigabits per second interface. The latest generation is the third generation. It offers a maximum data transfer rate of 6 gigabits per second. However, its bandwidth is limited, making it less suitable for high-performance applications that need faster data transfer speeds. NVM Express does not support HDD. It is explicitly developed for SSD drives. It does not use a cable. It attaches the SSD drive directly to the motherboard on a M.2 slot. It can transfer data at a speed of 32 gigabits per second. Computers use firmware to initialize hardware. Firmware is a small program stored inside a chip on the motherboard. When we start a computer, it is the first program that the computer runs. It performs three tasks, initialize all hardware devices, find the bootloader program, and execute it. In the first step, it checks whether all hardware devices are functional. If yes, it moves to the second step. If not, it halts the startup process. This process is known as power on self-test or post. In the second step, it finds the bootloader program. We can store a bootloader program on any external storage device, such as a hard disk, USB drive, CD, or a DVD. All OS installation disks come with a bootloader program. The installation program transfers it to the hard disk when we install the operating system. Firmware allows us to specify the boot device priority. The boot device priority defines the boot order. Firmware checks the specified devices in a sequence until it finds a bootloader program. Once it finds a bootloader program, it does not check the next device in the sequence. Let us take an example. Suppose, three devices hard disk, DVD-ROM, and USB drive are configured in the boot device priority. First, firmware will find the bootloader program on the hard disk. If it finds a bootloader program on the hard disk, it executes it and does not check the CD-ROM and USB drive. If it does not find a bootloader program on the hard disk, it checks the DVD-ROM. If the DVD-ROM has a disk, it finds the bootloader program on it. If the DVD-ROM does not have a DVD or has a non-bootable DVD, the firmware checks all USB ports for a connected USB drive. If a USB drive is attached, the firmware finds the bootloader program on it. If firmware does not find a bootloader program on any specified device, it halts the boot process. If it finds a bootloader program on any specified device, it executes the bootloader program. The bootloader program controls the remaining boot process. There are two types of firmware, BIOS and UEFI. Both find the bootloader program on different regions of the specified devices in the boot device list. 
BIOS finds it on the first sector of the specified devices. It reads the first 512 bytes of the device. It calls them MBR. If the MBR contains a bootloader program, it executes that program. If it does not contain a bootloader program, it finds a bootloader program on the MBR of the next specified device in the boot device list. UEFI finds a bootloader after the first sector. It reads 4 kilobytes after skipping the first 512 bytes. It calls them GPT. If the GPT contains a bootloader program, it executes that program. If it does not contain the bootloader program, it checks the GPT of the next specified device in the boot device list. BIOS is a classical method to save firmware. It was released in 1975. It operates in 16-bit mode and provides only basic UI navigation using the keyboard. It supports up to 14 partitions and a maximum partition size of 2 terabytes. It takes a bit longer time to boot the system. It supports only password protection. UEFI is a modern way to save firmware. It was released in 2002. It operates in 32-bit and 64-bit modes. It provides graphical UI navigation. It supports up to 128 partitions and a maximum partition size of 18 exabytes. It takes only a few seconds to boot the system and supports secure boot features. MBR is a classical way to store a bootloader program and partition information. It reserves the first 512 bytes of the storage device to save this information. Only BIOS-based systems use it. UEFI-based systems do not use it. They use GPT to store partition information and a bootloader program. MBR is non-redundant. It does not replicate the records it contains. If it is corrupt, the system will not boot. It supports a maximum of 14 partitions. GPT is a modern way to store a bootloader program and partition information. To save this information, it uses 4 kilobits disk space after the first 512 bytes of the hard disk. Since it does not modify or use the reserved disk space for MBR, both BIOS and UEFI-based systems can use it. GPT is redundant. It saves a copy of the partition information at the end of the disk. It supports a maximum of 128 partitions. You can use the entire disk as a single partition or create multiple partitions on it. Usually, administrators create partitions to make disk management easier. Let us take an example. Suppose, you have a 2 terabytes hard disk. You want to use it to store text files, media files, and script files. Without any partition, you have to save all three types of content on the same partition. You can do that, but it would make accessing and managing them difficult. The correct way would be to create and use three partitions, one for each type. You can create a small-sized partition for text files, a mid-sized for script files, and a large-sized partition for media files. It makes finding and managing files much easier. There are two types of partitions, standard and advanced. You can use any type based on disk size and your requirements. Standard partitions are easy. All operating systems by default include tools and utilities to create and manage them. They are mainly used on personal computers. They do not need any additional disks. You can create and use them on a single disk. GPT and MBR are used to store standard partitions information. GPT supports a maximum of 128 partitions. It uses a flat partitioning scheme. All partitions are equal. You can create them in a sequence starting from 1. MBR supports a maximum of 14 partitions. It uses a bit complex partitioning scheme. It divides partition into three types primary, extended, and logical. You can create a maximum of four primary partitions. If you need more partitions, you need to convert the last primary partition into an extended partition. An extended partition works like a container for logical partitions. You can create a maximum of 11 logical partitions inside the extended partition. An extended partition is not used to store data. It is used to store only logical partitions. Advanced partitions are complex. They are mainly used on server systems and usually need more than one disk. By default, operating systems may or may not include tools and utilities to create and manage them. If tools and utilities are not installed by default, you need to install them before you can create and use advanced partitions. LVM and RAID are advanced partitions. LVM creates a logical pool from standard partitions and uses it to create logical partitions. The main difference between standard partitions and LVM logical partitions is that standard partitions are fixed while LVM logical partitions are flexible. You cannot extend or shrink the size of a standard partition. However, you can increase or decrease the size of a LVM logical partition.
RAID creates an array of disks. It can store the same data on multiple disks. It is mainly used to create the real-time backup of data. A hard disk contains tracks and sectors. It uses tracks to organize sectors and sectors to save data. When we save a file on it, the operating system saves the file on any of these sectors. It uses an index known as a file system to know which file is stored in which sector. A file system is a database of all files and directories stored on the hard disk. It also specifies conventions for file names such as the maximum number and types of characters we can use in a file name. Along with the names and locations of the files, it also stores information about their sizes, attributes, and metadata. Different operating systems use different file systems. NTFS, EXT4, and XFS are widely used file systems. That's all for this video. If you have any suggestions, comments, or feedback about this video, please share them in the comment section given below.